Is it still too early to be talking about this one? It is trying to get back above its 50-day line today, but it has definitely been a laggard in this recent market rally. Yeah, so I mean, that's that's the thing that bothers me the most. You look at the relative strength line, and this just has been trending lower. Now, uh, I don't think it's too early to start talking about it because there are a few things that look interesting about this. It did get support at its 200-day moving average line um, and, and right around 50. So I think that's, uh, I like where it got that supporting action. And now it's above its 50-day moving average line. So whenever things are uh, above their, you know, 200 day moving average line and getting above their 50 day moving average line, I think it's, you know, worth kind of adding them to the discussion because uh, it's better to have things on your radar and not act on them than to not have them on your radar and regret that, you know, like, oh, wh where did this come from? You know, that the, the move is uh, so strong and it just I, I wasn't paying attention. So um, I'd, I'd, I'd rather have a few extra things on my radar that I'm not going to act on um, than, mm -hmm. than less. So, yeah, I think, you know, the fact that it's back above its 50 day moving average line puts it into kind of a, hey, you know, maybe maybe it's worth looking at again. Um, there certainly was some decent volume on the downside. So that's something that you know, I, I'm always thinking of kind of like this balancing act, right? When you have things that are negative, like volume coming in on the downside, I want something positive to kind of balance that out, you know, something to balance out the scales. Um, so that's what I'd be looking for now. Again, probably not going to get huge volume, um, you know, this week necessarily, but um, start, you know, start piling up some some nice signals, some some positive signals uh, for the stock. Uh, that's that's what I'd be looking for here. That underperformance right now is is the thing that I think sets uh, sets Celsius apart a little bit. Um, that a lot of things were moving and this just didn't participate. Doesn't mean it can't. Right. A lot of times, uh, you know, things are a little bit slow to move at first. Uh, money rotates. It's always looking for a home, um, and uh, so that's that's. That's my concern, though, is that the the lack of participation shows maybe uh, a, a laggard right now instead of a leader. Right. And I do have this trend line set. Maybe if it can get back above that and tighten up, we'll have to see. This one definitely has the story. And mm -hmm. I'm I'm a fan of the product. I haven't tried all of the flavors or anything like that. There's a million flavors, but uh, there are a couple that I really do like and I'm seeing it everywhere. Go back to Celsius, C-E-L-H. I just want to uh, uh, thank FFF in the Q&A for highlighting the heavy short interest. It's almost 30% or more of the total float. And we covered short interest uh, a week ago. And so I wanted just to uh, explain also on on air exactly how we come come up with that number. So 6.4 days is 6.4 times the average current daily volume, which you can see of 5.2 million. So basically it would take 6.4 days of average daily trading for all of the short sellers to cover their positions and to be square. And that is a lot, first of all, as a number, six times uh, the average volume, uh, like a week's worth of trading. And that also translates to a large ratio of the float. Now, you see the big difference in the float and outstanding. I think part of that is not only insiders or executives, but also the fact that Pepsi, is it right? Ken PepsiCo has a significant stake in this company to help them distribute nationwide and, and overseas. So I, I think this is, uh, if the company continues to deliver great growth, this is uh, going to add some firepower, in my humble opinion, about the uh, regard, regarding the future move on Celsius.